Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. And today I wanna to discuss a topic that I've seen uh, floating around the comment section quite a bit lately, especially in those videos that are comparing AMD's Ryzen CPUs to Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs. Now, before we get into the details, I just wanna clarify a few things. I don't have a hidden motive for this video. I don't have any contacts at AMD or Intel. I don't even have a preference for either platform. In fact, I've used both in my main machine when it comes to video editing. And in the event that I do receive uh, free CPU samples, which eventually have to be returned, uh, they are from motherboard manufacturers in return to review their boards. Now, what we're talking about today is whether the upgrade path for your CPU really matters a whole lot and ultimately how much that should influence your purchasing decision. By upgrade path, we're referring to the scenario that your current motherboard supports future generation CPUs. And by no upgrade path, we mean that you'll have to upgrade your board the next time you want to upgrade to the next generation of CPU. And by path, we're restricting the conversation to generational upgrades to, for example, upgrading your first gen Ryzen CPU to a second gen one. And we're not talking about upgrading from one current gen CPU to a slightly more current gen CPU, for example, from a Ryzen 3 to a Ryzen 5. And the reason for that is the support is fairly similar for both Intel and AMD at the moment. And there's just not that many people upgrading that quickly. So the real conversation is whether your current motherboard supports future generation CPUs. And in the case of Ryzen CPUs, the answer is yes. Uh, it does support future generation CPUs up until their final generation in the year 2020, as far as their roadmap outlines. And the answer is also yes for Intel, but it's a much shorter two year cycle instead of the four year that AMD has laid out for Ryzen. This means that early adopters of the Ryzen architecture in 2017 and perhaps a B350 motherboard will have a solid CPU upgrade path for Ryzen CPUs until 2020, as far as the roadmap outlines. But if someone who bought an Intel KB Lake CPU at the same time now also wants to upgrade, not just in 2020, but for any CPU generation succeeding KB Lake for that matter, they'll need to buy a new compatible motherboard along with it. So how much should this have an impact on your purchasing decision and how much money are you actually saving if you go with a motherboard with an actual upgrade path? Well, let's roll with our example. Let's say in April 2017, subject A purchases a Ryzen 5 1600 and a B350 motherboard for a total of 309 US dollars. And then hypothetically in 2019, they decide to upgrade to the third generation flagship Ryzen CPU. Well, it's as easy as updating the BIOS, purchasing the new CPU and then swapping it in. But how much money is actually saved? Well, assuming that the motherboard didn't support the new CPU and that our subject would need to purchase a new one, we can estimate again an upfront cost of around $90. And there's many ways to look at this cost. For example, it's equal to $45 per year or $3.75 per month. That's the amount of money that they save by not upgrading their motherboard along with the CPU over the course of two years. And it's not exactly a whole lot. Where it is a whole lot though is for those who invest in expensive enthusiast level boards to begin with, which can cost in the ballpark of $250. In that case, the money saved is definitely more significant. An upfront cost of $250, which is equal to $125 per year in our example, or just over $10 per month. One thing's also very apparent here, and that's that the more frequently you upgrade your CPU with that upgrade path, the more value you're getting out of that motherboard compared to if you had to buy a new one every single time you upgraded your CPU. And this also means that those who upgrade less frequently are sort of not benefiting from that upgrade path as much as they could be. For example, if subject A only planned on upgrading to the final generation Ryzen CPU in 2020, they're only really saving $22.50 per year compared to if they needed to buy a new board. And that saved amount is assuming that if they did have to buy a new motherboard, that they're not selling their old motherboard and making back some of the money there, which would definitely be a sensible move. Now, I'm not trying to say that saved money doesn't matter, but rather for those who aren't upgrading frequently or buying high-end boards that they want to get the most out of, I don't feel like an extensive upgrade path should be a significant reason to choose one platform and ultimately one CPU over another. In my opinion, looking at these numbers, the reason you should choose one over the other should 99% come down to which one is the best for your use case. Another interesting conversation is whether installing that next gen CPU into your old motherboard is really a good idea. I mean, are you really getting the most out of that CPU that you could be? 
And I think the answer for most people is actually yes, because most people aren't pushing their CPUs to the absolute limit. They're likely using that CPU for gaming and maybe some light multi-thread workloads. But for the rest of us who are pushing the CPUs to the absolute limit, upgrading your motherboard along with that next gen CPU might actually be a good idea. For example, at Computex this year, I saw a couple of motherboards which were absolutely tanked with VRMs to support AMD's new second gen Threadripper CPUs, most notably up to their 32 core 64 thread monster. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was investing that much money on a CPU which required a demanding VRM to get the most out of it, I wouldn't mind grabbing an appropriate board for it. My argument here is that even if your board can support the newer generation higher core CPU, it might be a good idea to upgrade your board anyway if you want to squeeze as much performance as you can out of it. Another example would be the new 8 core CPU from Intel which has now officially appeared in some Z370 motherboard BIOS updates and as much as I am excited to drop a new 8 core CPU into my editing system, I'm pretty confident that I'll be maxing out the VRM on my mini ITX board at full load. In that case, I'd be more than happy to purchase a refreshed board with an updated VRM to squeeze as much performance and stability out of that chip that I can. And expanding on that note, it's clear that the line for motherboard compatibility for multiple CPU generations needs to be drawn somewhere. We can't expect motherboard support to last for five plus years. Eventually, not only does the VRM design need to be updated to support higher cores down the road, but things like connectivity and storage options also need to be updated. So when should the upgrade path of a motherboard and platform influence your decision when looking at CPU options? Well, I think firstly, for those looking at enthusiast level boards and spending a ton of money there, it's definitely a good reason to look at the upgrade path of the board because you obviously wanna look at how long that board is going to last you. Personally, if I was buying a $300 or $400 board, I'd want that board to last me at least two to three years. The same can be said for those who plan on upgrading their CPU every generation for whatever reason, as that way you'll be getting more value out of your motherboard each time you get to keep it along with your new CPU. Although there's also the argument that for an enthusiast level board, you're most likely pairing it with the flagship compatible CPU, in which case your upgrades are probably going to be less frequent. I don't however feel like having a supported upgrade path is a significant factor when looking at those who either buy cheap motherboards to start with or for those who don't plan on upgrading very frequently. For example, those who plan on buying a Zen 3 CPU at the end of 2020 to put in their B350 motherboard are really only saving about $20 to $30 per year and for something that you guys probably use every single day, I don't see that as a significant amount. The bottom line for those users should always come down to the CPU itself and whether or not it gives you the performance that you're after. As always guys, I'm interested to see what you guys think of this topic down below and more specifically, do you guys think the upgrade path of a CPU is a big consideration when looking at different options or are you happy to sell your old motherboard when it comes time to upgrade? Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one.